Welcome to Volume 2 of the tutorial on Sculpty Paint. I know I said I was going to move directly to the next page, but there were a couple things I wanted to cover first before we move past this page. Uh, for one, these reset tools uh, down here just at the bottom of the tab. Uh, each of these allows you to reset the sculpt to a various preset or primitive as the phrase might be. Now don't get that confused with the SL primitives. I'm just saying preloaded, preconfigured shape, you know, presets. Uh, this allows you to switch to a square plane, triangular plane, uh, some sort of weird football shape plane, uh, torus prim type, which uh, as you can see here, okay, has a hole in it. Uh, pyramid, uh, which is a spherical type sculpt map. Uh, cylinder, uh, cube, here's a little flat cube, as you can see if I rotate it here, or if you look here you can sort of see that there's some, yeah, thin stuff. Anyway, um, moving on, of course, back to the regular sphere. Now, that's the basics of this page, except of course this area here, which is the drawing area, which allows you to uh, create a selection mask by clicking and dragging, uh, or just clicking, uh, you can add or subtract. Uh, it's binary. So um, this allows you to create a mask. And why is that useful on the Morph Tool page? Because the Morph Tool lets you, by creating a mask, you're allowing yourself to mask off areas that don't morph. Uh, very useful if you wanted to make a shape that went from, you know, like that. If you wanted to make that shape, uh, that would be how you do it. And it would be very handy and convenient to have. Uh, and of course, being that you can smooth, you could do that. Masking also prevents the sculpt from being smooth. So to clear the, the mask, we just hit clear selected and then hit smooth. And you can see now we've created this nifty little horribly shaped thing. Totally unrelated to what we're doing now, so I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, get a model and go back to the sphere. Now I just want to make sure that we covered this. Uh, this is the resize sculpt button and it is the most useful tool in this entire program by far. Um, this allows you to take a sculpt map that is a little bit smaller than your bounding box, or maybe a lot smaller than your bounding box, and by just pressing the button once, boom, maxes it out. Uh, it can often deform the sculpt, which we'll get into at some point later, or maybe we won't, but uh, for the most part, it's just going to make it as big as it possibly can be. And then you can rescale the uh, prim in world to make it match properly. Uh, obviously you can see a little bit of wrinkling here, and uh, just a couple taps on smooth sculpt takes that right out. So let's go ahead and move on to the next page, which for me, honestly, I don't have a preference of which way to go here. There are some tabs I don't understand, uh, and sometimes I do. Uh, let's start with RGB layers. Uh, RGB layers allows you to um, uh, edit the channels, the color channels. Every sculpt map is made out of three channels, and as you can sort of see here, this is what the red looks like, this is what the green looks like, and this is what the blue looks like. These three buttons allow you to load uh, independent maps uh, if you were for some bizarre reason deciding that you wanted to uh, paint your own sculpts color by color this would be the great way to bring them all together finally uh, I don't really know how this tool works but I know that you can use um, these arrows to slide to, to sort of slide the picture up or down and you can get some interesting effects that maybe you had no intention of having. Uh, it, it can be handy, it can be, especially if you're making freeform shapes, but uh, kind of confusing. I'm going to pop back to Morph Tool for a second and just go back to A model because that gets a little confusing. So we were back on RGB layers, and uh, you, can, you can't draw in here, so you have to do that drawing in a Photoshop or something like that, but this tool allows you to sort of compile uh, individually drawn channels. 
I'm moving on to the drawing tool. Now, the drawing tool is a very complex thing. It usually starts out on the draw width. I, sorry about that. Um, this tool allows you to, uh, if you can sort of envision that this is a side view of the sphere, like a, like a cross section that's sort of elongated for no apparent reason. Uh, but obviously, this is the top, and down here is the middle, and down here is the bottom. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to do grab an entire ring, and, uh, or in this case, perhaps not. Perhaps I've confused it by playing with it earlier. So, uh, hang on just one second. Well, to be very honest, I never really understood this tool anyway, so I don't know exactly why it's being suddenly bizarre. I played with it a little bit earlier before I started the tutorial, and of course, in order to reset it to default, I'd have to quit the program and start over, but uh, basically this normally allows you to select an entire ring, and you can scale it in or out by, you know, adjusting these little things, and as I said, Java program, so it's a little bit sluggish uh, to react, but this currently is just selecting individual sections in weird ways, and I think it has to do with this setting here, this 4, 8, 16, whatever. Um, I was playing with the flower tool, so that might be what the problem was, and that's the next one we're going to go to. So I'm just going to reset the sculpt, or reset the sphere, and move on to the flower tool. This, like I said, this is the cross section. This is the height, and a really bizarre way of visualizing this. This is the top, and this is the bottom. And knowing that, these are the individual rings between the top and the bottom. So you can move, like this section, up. Like so. And as you can see, of course, it's doing exactly what I don't want it to do, because it's it's being weird. So, um, <laughs> normally that would have picked up an entire ring. Um, let's, let's go on, shall we? Um, the flower tool, another tool I don't really understand very well. Um, this was designed to let you make flowers. No, I'm not kidding. Uh, it allows you to stem, to change the stem height and width of, of the prim. You can make a, a stem, and uh, you can take these various things here and you know, honestly, no idea. This is one of, uh, I think it's supposed to allow you to make some nice sculpted flowers. Um, all I've ever done is play with the randomized tool. And to be honest, uh, I, I don't even get it. Um, let me resize this so we can see it a bit better. And as you can see, it's sort of creating some sort of a shape that uh, vaguely resembles a flower, kind of. I'm going to pop back to Morph Tool for a second. I want to try smoothing this a couple taps. And you can see that you can get some interesting shapes out of it, um, which could be handy if you wanted to do something completely random um, for an art project or something. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and move on down. That was, as I said, the flower tool, and uh, this again doesn't allow you to draw. So, but there is this uh, tool here, which I don't even know what it is for. It says st stem shape here, and there's some randomized text. I think it's random texture. Um, I don't know. All right, moving on to the stone tool. Now, this is a tool I actually do understand, so I'm going to cover that actually in the next section, because we're coming right up on nine minutes now. So uh, catch me in the next one, and we'll continue from there.